Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us. We start the show this week with details of the FY15 operating budget. County Executive Ike Leggett announced his recommended $4.97 billion budget, which increases school funding and reduces the property tax rate. The county starts to see the Thank light you. at the end of the tunnel. That's Thank how you. Montgomery County Executive Ike and Leggett announced his recommended $4.97 billion operating budget for fiscal year 2015. I believe our best days are yet to come, but none of this comes easy. County government spent an increase of the last two years in the previous administration by 36% in the last three years. That was just before I assumed office. This was simply unsustainable. We needed to put our county's financial house in order. Then came the Great Recession. I made some very tough and difficult decisions. For the first five years, I crafted budgets with zero increases in county tax-supported spending. I reduced the county's workforce by 10%. No colas for three years. Furloughs, no steps. I reduced the county's share of the employee's health and retirement costs. This alone saved a half a billion dollars with actions of tens of millions of dollars in savings going forward. I could say that I know of no county executive, no governor in the region, no mayor, who did as much for as long as I did those things. My objective, however, was to protect our public schools, enhance public safety, and provide support for the most vulnerable in our midst. The budget devotes record spending for Montgomery County Public Schools, contributing $1.5 billion. That is $26 million over the mandated state maintenance of effort level. I very much appreciate the county executive's recognition that the Montgomery County Public Schools are the signature element of the Montgomery County brand and they're essential to the continued economic uh, vitality uh, of the region. I appreciate uh, his going above the minimum required by law um, and we're still going to have to make up $15 million in vital programs and services to our kids and families. Montgomery College will be funded $110 million, an 11% increase from last year. We're very grateful to the executive. I think he's recognized the sacrifice our employees have made of the considerable growth we've had in terms of our student enrollment over the last several years. So we're very grateful to him. There's still work to be done, but we're very grateful for what the executive's done. On the public safety side, Executive Leggett budgeted to add 23 police civilian employees and patrol units in Wheaton and the Germantown Business District. This increase is part of a multi-year increase, and uh, what's, what's been so good about this is that we have identified the areas in the county that have a higher crime rate than most other areas, and we've been able to one by one add additional resources to each one of those areas and then see a dramatic decrease in the crime and, and, and calls for service in those areas. So my hope is that with adding officers that uh, up into the Germantown area, adding officers to the Wheaton area, we're going to see the same results. The executive's proposed budget also increases by 10 percent the Housing Initiative Fund. Additional funding for Developmental Disability Supplement and Nurse Services for seniors and disabled the clients. Years, the expansion of the after-school program Matt. Excel Beyond the Bell to the Watkins Mill School Cluster, and a 10% increase for English Adult Literacy Program. The proposed budget holds the line on property taxes at the chartered limit. The average homeowner will pay $17 less in taxes this year. Over the next two months, the County Council now has the task of fine-tuning the budget before a final vote. As Susan Kennedy tells us, overall, council members say the County Executive's budget gives them a great starting point. Susan? Lorna, the budget unveiled this week by the County Executive is now in the hands of the County Council, where it will be thoroughly examined before a final vote this May. The budget that I am recommending today 
Council members were on hand as Mr. Leggett presented his plan for financing county government for fiscal year 2015. As the county continues to recover slowly from the effects of a nationwide recession, Council President Craig Rice says Leggett's approach is prudent. You know, the county executive laid out a great framework for us. Uh, certainly understanding education is important uh, and funding them at 99 and some extra percentage points uh, towards their uh, full funding ask, uh, Montgomery College. Uh, funding Montgomery College uh, above the level of maintenance of effort. Uh, not at the same level as what we've seen with MCPS, but uh, certainly a start. And so uh, we might need to be looking at a few things that we might need to do there additional to kind of help them. The biggest area of spending in this year's budget is in the schools. The proposal exceeds the maintenance of effort requirement by $26 million and requires the school system to spend $11 million of its own unspent funds on fiscal year 2015 operations. Though council members acknowledge the schools need to advocate for funding, the council has dozens of other agencies to consider when making up the budget. This is a good year and um, the, the executive branch has done a good and thoughtful job making its recommendations and now our work begins. We'll take our responsibilities very seriously. We'll go through the budget line by line between now and, and the end of May, but it's a good starting point. Once again, Councilmember Phil Andrews is concerned with the size of pay increases for unionized county employees and his decision to retain the energy tax. This is the second year in a row of six and three quarter to nine and three quarter pay raises are excessive uh, and out of line with what other folks are getting. Uh, and they require higher taxes uh, than uh, on the energy tax. Uh, you know, keeping that energy tax at a very high level is what the county executive is proposing, uh, which is causing problems for us economically in terms of our competitiveness. So we need to take the energy tax rate down. We should reduce the pay increases to a reasonable level so they're sustainable and more in line with what other jurisdictions are doing. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. It is official. The newly renovated Olney Library opened for business with a new look and expanded hours. A large crowd of residents joined Executive Ike Leggett and other public officials during the ribbon cutting ceremony and reopening. Under the renovation project, the building was increased in size to over 22,000 square feet. Some of the new amenities include a children's program room with a privacy glass and a separate teen area with specialty designed seating. Customers will have access to more than 80,000 volumes of printed materials and 21st century technological advances. We opened the Gaithersburg Library a few weeks ago, and we're opening this library today. But a library is more than just a building. It is just one component of it. It is part of a community. We're not just going to open a library today and not have within this library the leadership, the staff that you need, the access, the time to utilize the library when you want to, and the material within the library. That is part of the commitment. The Olney Library will be open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday, noon to 5. It is located at 3500 Olney Laytonsville Road. And the county will host another community drop-off for electronics recycling on Saturday, March 29th at the Poolsville High School. This is a good opportunity to dispose of old electronics by recycling. The county's electronics drop-off is open daily at the Shady Grove Processing Facility and Transfer Station in Gaithersburg. But the community events held throughout the county give residents the opportunity to recycle in their communities. So save the date for March 29th and drop off your old electronics at Poolsville High. When we come back, the Silver Spring Advisory Board meets this month to discuss transportation projects. And county public safety officials get recognized at the 40th Annual Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Awards Luncheon. We'll be right back.
April 22nd, take part in the most creative and collaborative day of the year as Montgomery Community Media hosts a day in the life of Montgomery County. On Earth Day, April 22nd, snap a pic or shoot some video and send it to pics at mymcmedia.org. Not long after, your photos and videos will show up on our website and may even show up on our channels. To learn more, visit mymcmedia.org to find out how you can play your part. Mark your calendars, Earth Day, April 22nd, for a day in the life of Montgomery County. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lauren Avergelli. Connecting the community was the topic of discussions at the recent Citizens Advisory Board meeting in Silver Spring. My MC Media's Valerie Bonk has the latest on the major transportation projects that could change the way residents get around. Transportation was the theme of the night at the Silver Spring Citizens Advisory Board meeting, where locals pitched in their thoughts on the major projects aimed at connecting the community. Earlier this year, the board looked at the redevelopment of White Oak, Wheaton, and Walter Reed. At this meeting, Silver Spring Citizen Advisory Board members wanted to know how to connect those upcoming developments with the surrounding communities and cut down on the number of cars on the road. We need to make sure that as this community grows, we do it in a thoughtful way and that is predicated on a good public transportation system. An update on the long coming Purple Line came as a relief to some who have been advocating and anticipating the addition of the line for years. There is a recommendation of the budget of $100 million, so that's a really good thing. That's just puts actual actuality into the plan. I think it's very exciting that we finally gotten the Purple Line with some kind of federal um, approval um, being in the budget. A new topic for the board also came into discussion as representatives from DC Streetcar presented a vision for bringing their services to the Silver Spring area. DC was laid out through a streetcar system and so um, Again, I, it's, to me, it's just about being able to move around without the expense, the pollution. The board voted to require the county to begin looking at the idea of bringing the D.C. streetcar line into the Silver Spring area and where a terminal might be located. I really was interested in their concept of connecting neighborhoods because that's what I think the transportation should be about. Silver Spring Regional Center Director Rianberto Rodriguez believes that the upcoming transportation projects could mean major changes in the Silver Spring community. It totally makes for a, for a different type of community, if you will, and, and it's just really great that, that we're having those conversations at this time because, needless to say, we, we want to we wanna get it right. For County Report this week, I'm Valerie Ball. And now we get an update about the smart parking meters installed in Bethesda. Here is Tom Polk from the County Department of Transportation. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. In late February, MCDOT replaced 840 on-street parking meters in Bethesda with new smart parking meters. The new meters expand payment options, accepting Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover credit cards, in addition to coins or pay by cell. The parking meters have a highly visible expiration time indicator. The meter screen displays hours and days when payment is required, parking rates, and restrictions. The meters have real-time communication capabilities that quickly signal staff about broken meters and process credit card transactions with the highest level of security. Cash keys cannot be used in the smart meters, but will continue to be an option in lots and garages that accept them. Customers can exchange their cash key at the Bethesda Parking Store, located in Cheltenham Garage, for a value card. This card can be used like a credit card in the meters and will contain the equivalent to the cash key's loaded value plus deposit. For more information, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash MCDOT. We're working to keep you moving. The 40th Annual Public Safety Awards Luncheon recognized the acts of valor demonstrated by officers of the five Montgomery County Public Safety Agencies. Forty years ago, the Chamber started hosting the event where the community 
could honor first responders for their heroic acts. Our volunteers and our long-term career firefighters are doing an excellent job, and we have the resources. But again, having the resources, the equipment, the technology is one thing, but having the dedicated leadership and the personnel that operates this each and every day is what makes the difference, and that is why we are here today to congratulate them. I want to add and thank all again, the awardees for all of the things that they've done and continue to do to make Montgomery County a very, very safe place, but we can do even better. This year, the individuals recognized were involved in key incidents. Some of those incidents included two suicide attempts, a car fire rescue at a gas station, an m and bank robbery, and a fire at an apartment. We congratulate the recipients. When we come back, a Montgomery College professor is recognized for teaching cybersecurity. And Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett meets with editors from the newspapers of several local high schools. We'll be right back. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Welcome back to County Report this week, I'm Lorna Vigili. Dr. C.K. Chang recently received the prestigious Cyber Award from Symantec, a well-known cybersecurity corporation, for his efforts teaching cybersecurity at Montgomery College. Danielle Stetsky has the details. An MC faculty member since 2001, Dr. Chang is a popular professor, known for his extensive knowledge and great sense of humor. He's really uh, funny and really interesting and he's a good professor. He's the type of professor that will really give back and engage you if you show initiative. As part of Dr. Chang's postdoctorate work in mechanical engineering, he worked on high pressure and high temperature cooling systems for fighter jets, a joint project of NASA and the Air Force, one of his many professional accomplishments. He teaches at the Germantown campus of Montgomery College in a wide variety of subjects, including computer hardware, software, networking, forensics, cybersecurity, programming, and physics. Dr. Cheng is also the faculty advisor for the MC Cyberwatch Club, which recently took first place in the Digital Forensics Challenge. He's really kind of guided our focus. We would be all over the place and trying to learn things that may not necessarily contribute to success in one of these competitions. He tells us to how to prepare and the best ways to uh, get ready for the competitions and the things to watch out for. Last year, his students nominated him for the 2013 Cyber Awards, and Dr. Cheng didn't know about the nomination until he received a suspicious email congratulating him. Then. I seen a lot of email out, I say, what's happening, anyone knows anything? Dr. Cheng received his Cyber Award in Education at the 2014 Symantec Government Symposium in Washington, D.C. It's an honor, so I think it's pretty good. In a rapidly growing field in which cyber attacks require unique and quick responses, Dr. Cheng helps to provide his students with the most current information and techniques and hopes that they can use that knowledge to further their education and successfully gain employment in cybersecurity. For County Report This Week in Germantown, I'm Daniel Wisteski. In this next story, MCPS students swap culinary tips across international borders. MCPS TV has the story from Gaithersburg. Watkins Mill High School culinary students and their British counterparts at Acklam Grain School got together via the internet for an exchange of ideas and recipes. We are celebrating today our International School Meals Day, helping kids around the world understand the importance of global citizenship. We learned a lot about their food and 
how they prepare their food and how they serve it and all their different menu options and compared that to ours. The food choices emerged as a topic of interest. It's important to eat healthy because for a lot of us, we're athletes, we're in high school, we're about to leave and be on our own, so we need to learn good eating habits. We have to explore more. We can't just eat pizza and fries every day. The Watkins Mill program is giving students a peek into what it's like to work in the real world. We follow Pro Start program, which is the National Restaurant Association's program to teach students how to be successful in the food service industry. The students you saw today are all wanting to be chefs or um, in some form of the hospitality industries. My goal is to become a chef. I'm going to be attending Culinary Institute of America and get a degree in culinary arts and hospitality management and hope to open my own restaurant. County Executive Ike Lake had met with several Montgomery County High School newspaper editors and staff writers. The students visited the executive in his Rockville office and they peppered him with questions about school construction funding, the voting age, the status of the Purple Line, the need for school resource officers, and more. The students were from Bethesda, Chevy Chase, Churchill, Paint Branch, Poolsville, Rockville, Whitman and Wooden High Schools. This is an invite for middle and high school students. The Montgomery County's Office of Human Rights is hosting a free community forum and discussion called Bullying in Schools, a community symposium on prevention and intervention strategies. This will be held on Saturday, March 29th from 1230 to 330 in the afternoon at the Tacoma Park campus of Montgomery College in downtown Silver Spring. The city of Rockville is gearing up for its annual Science Day. In this story from Rockville 11, we take a peek at the preps. We have a great event planned for April 6th at Montgomery College, uh, Sunday, April 6th, uh, from noon to 5 o'clock. We have a lot of activities planned for uh, families of all ages. Uh, we have a lot of neat things going on. This is our 25th anniversary year. We've been doing this for 25 years over at Montgomery College. And uh, this is really going to be a great year. We've got, a, as I said, a lot of old ev events that have been there in past years. We've got rocket launches, and we've got birds, and we've got reptiles. We've got rocks, and geology, and chemistry, and biology, and astronomy with lots of telescopes, robots, lots of robots, and lots of technology and engineering activities. Um, these are an example of some of the rockets that they're gonna, uh, the kids will be able to build on Science Day. There's just a tremendous variety, and so there's something for everyone. And I'm always happy with the people that come as visitors at Science Day and come back as exhibitors the next year. We're going to expand to have a science weekend. We're going to have um, a, a lady come and talk to us, uh, Forging Frontiers with Kate Campbell Stevenson on Friday, uh, April 4th. This is going to start at uh, 7 o'clock at night. Um, over at the Perilla Performing Arts Center at Montgomery College. And this promises to be something really special, especially for the women in our society and women and the girls in our uh, families. We'd like them to be there to see something about women in science. But some of the new things this year that are really different, um, one is NASA's got a surprise item that's coming. We're not sure what it is yet, but I was told they're going to deliver it. So something's going to be delivered. It sounds like it's going to be really cool. You're going to find a lot of things there to do, uh, activities to do, but it's also the hope is to spark some science passion and science interest um, in the younger members of our population to try to get them to think about maybe careers in science. But it's not only careers, it's fun. Science can be fun. Celebrate 25 years of Science Day. When we come back, there are hundreds of jobs available for youth over 16 years of age. We'll tell you who's ready to employ them. And we talk with a local author who has just finished a biography on the creator of the Muppets. Stay with us. Montgomery College engineering professor Monica Molini has received two distinguished awards. The District of Columbia Council of Engineering and Architectural Societies named Molini Engineer of the Year and she also received the 2013 IEEE MGA Achievement Award. 
before you know it, summer will be here. So now is the perfect time to register for summer classes at MC to make sure you get the classes you want when you want them. Register in person at any of our three campuses or online anytime, 24 hours a day. The Frank Islam Athenium Symposia Speaker Series continues on MC's Germantown campus with an impressive and varied schedule of speakers. All lectures are free and open to the public. Welcome back to Counter Report this week. I'm Lorna Pacelli. Well, here is a job announcement for youth 16 years of age and older, college students, and also for teachers. The county's Department of Recreation is hosting a job fair for summer camp workers and year-round temporary staff. Each year, the Recreation Department hires more than 300 summer camp and temporary staff positions that include counselors, pool aides, and assistants. Come to the fair so they can talk to the counselors and to staff to see where can they fit the best. We have uh, summer programs throughout the, throughout the summer, but throughout the year we hire constantly in different places for centers, for after school programs, for the swimming pools. So this is a great opportunity to come and learn about recreation. Representatives will be on site to discuss the jobs available and to offer pre-screening interviews. The free job fair is scheduled for Friday, March 28th, starting at 11 a.m. at the Bauer Drive Community Recreation Center. It coincides with a professional date holiday for MCPS students. There's a lot of anticipation about the Muppets movie that's playing in theaters beginning this week. There's also a new best-selling biography out about the creator of the Muppets and the author of that book is a Montgomery County resident. My MC Media's Sonia Burke has more. You've seen him on the Today Show, The Daily Show, and CNN talking about the Muppets. But did you know author Brian J. Jones wrote the biography of Jim Henson right here in Montgomery County? These, these are mostly transcripts of all the interviews I conducted with everyone. Author Brian J. Right Jones has spent Henson. years researching and writing the first comprehensive biography of Jim Henson, the iconic creator of the Muppets. It was sort of a dream project. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend their time watching the Muppet Show and calling it work? Uh, so, uh, you know, it was really nice. I could sit downstairs and my wife say, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm watching Sesame Street and it's research. It took five years from the time he approached the Henson family about writing the story to handing in the final manuscript. It was published in September of 2013, uh, September 24th, which would have been Jim Henson's 77th birthday. A New York Times bestseller, the biography chronicles the creative genius of Jim Henson, whose early career in television actually began in Maryland. What was really important about being in Maryland is in the early days of television, the Washington, D.C. area had a lot of channels to choose from. They had four. But that was a lot in the early days of TV. And Jim first saw TV in 1949, when he was about 12 or 13 years old, and fell in love with television immediately. And it covers the creation and history of the Muppets. This is Jim's handwritten pitch for The Muppet Show, dating back to the mid-1960s. You can meet the biographer and learn a lot more about his topic at 7 p.m. on April 16th at the Gaithersburg Library. For more information about this event, visit the Gaithersburg Book Festival's website. Jim's one of these guys that always wanted his work to matter. He always wanted to make a difference. Uh, he said he wanted to be remembered as somebody who made a difference in the world. And, and he did. He did make a difference in the world. One guy. For County Report this week, I'm Sonia Burke. He wasn't a control freak, and people, I think, wanted him to be. Um, people wanted to be where he was. People wanted him involved. And now we meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society brings us a female bunny named Alice. This is Kathy Stanhope with your pet of the week, and I am here with a very special bunny, Alice. She's an asterisk. She's a young female. And the most wonderful thing about this bunny, besides being very pretty, is she is 100% litter box trained. The foster owner says she is the easiest pet she has ever taken care of her in, in her life, and that includes hamsters. So go to our website at mchumane.org or give us a call at 240-773-5960 and find out about our little darling here. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. 
We leave you today with sights and sounds from the Rock Creek Trail here in Montgomery County after our most recent snowfall. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.